So here we're going to show a physical examination of the neck and this patient was already treated for her leg length discrepancy or pelvic tilt and I'm checking it again just to make sure now my hands are nice and even as they should be. So that's been corrected and we're also going to look at the scapula. The scapula are really important because the heights of the scapula will be imperative to determine how the muscles are pulling on the neck. So if you can see here, the height of this scapula is inferior, this height of the scapula is superior. So we can see here, my hands are both on the spine of the scapula. So again, we're gonna have a discongruent pull on the cervical spine musculature. We wanna make sure that the scapula are even, and I'm gonna show you how we do that through a gentle manipulation. Also, whenever we see scapular depression, we can almost always guarantee that there's gonna be tenderness here to the infraspinatus and the teres minor fibers and around the latissimus dorsi. And these fibers need to be treated in addition to treating the lower cervical spine in order to regain the normal scapulothoracic um, anatomy and help it stay in place to where it should be so that it does not pull on the cervical spine. This one here is a little bit different. You're going to see that this side's not going to be as tender because typically the areas of elevation will have more problems around the levator scapular tendon here. And we're going to have to treat that also. So I'm going to have my patient sit. And you're going to see that when we have these problems with scapular incongruency, we're going to test the patient. We're going to have her bring her arms up. Now many people think that this is a magic trick, but it really is about kinesiology and physiology of movement. So hold your arms up really strong and do not let me pull. Now I'm not even gonna try, and I can pull her arms down really easily. And she's trying as hard as she can, right? Yes. So what we're gonna do before performing any injections is we're gonna reposition the scapula. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hold her arm at 90 degrees, I'm gonna support her elbow, and I'm going to have her pull her hand back towards the wall. So pull into this hand for me and rest, and pull again. You might have just heard that crack, mm -hmm. and rest, and pull again, and rest. Now here, we're gonna do the opposite. Since this scapula is elevated, we're gonna have her push. So she pushes here, and rest, pushes here, and rest, and pushes here and rest. And now I'm gonna have her bring her arms up again. Now we just saw a minute ago that I could just pull with my fingers and pull her arms straight down. What I'm gonna do now instead is I'm gonna pull as hard as I can. Now hold up strong. And now I'm gonna pull as hard as I can and because her scapula are in place, which I'm gonna show you if you stand up for me kindly, so now we can see when I place my hand on the spine of the scapula, they are nice and level. So since they're level, it's gonna take a lot of pressure off of the cervical spine here. But we're still gonna treat these areas that I mentioned before in order to give us our scapular stability. This is also really important for patients who have post-concussion syndrome as well because any type of pull or irregular force on the cervical cranial junction, which happens at C1 and C2, can interfere with brainstem and um, upper cervical nerve uh, function, and this can lead to a lot of different symptomatology, which we will discuss in other videos. And now we're gonna palpate the neck. So I always place the, poor, the patient in a little bit of a head forward position, and we're gonna feel between what's called the spinous processes and the transverse processes. The facet joints lie in these areas, but there's also very important ligamentous and tendinous structures and muscular structures that run in these regions that connect the cervical spine to itself, that connect the cervical spine down to the trapezius, and also connect the cervical spine up to the occiput, or the back of the head. And damage in these areas can trigger anything from neck pain to neck stiffness, to headache. And we wanna make sure that not only the facet joints are treated, but all of the supporting ligamentous structures that are weakened are treated. 
Here I'm checking along the transverse processes of the cervical spine, and there are some important muscular attachments there uh, with the scalenes and some of the other musculature. We also wanna check along the ridge of the occiput in what's called the superior and inferior nuchal line. And then we also want to check for the alignment of the transverse processes. Many chiropractors do this and osteopathic doctors do this as well. And even though I'm an MD, I believe you have to incorporate the best of medical treatment in order to help our patients. So we really want to make sure that the spine is aligned properly because proper spinal alignment will also help the patient feel better. Now this patient has a little bit of subluxation here. So we're just going to gently very gently maneuver the vertebrae and apply a slight force in something called low velocity, low amplitude treatment. And now the cervical spine is in line. And here we're palpating the thoracic spine. For the purpose of the video, we're gonna keep the patient clothed and we're gonna check around where the joints are. And also check the spinous processes. But the patient told me after her first treatment that this area is feeling much, much better and I would agree with her because on palpation, the area is significantly improved.